This is Megapine. Megapine. M I P. With Masamela Matsumo. Mark Thompson. Megapine. Get woke. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us today is a national expert on deaths that occur while in the custody of law enforcement. He currently is the chairman of the pathology department at Howard University of Medicine and is the speaker of the House of Delegates for the National Medical Association, the former chief of medical example, examiner for Washington, D.C. as well. We're going to talk about what the NMA has done, particularly in response to the Tyree Nichols tragedy. Our guest today, we welcome once again, Dr. Roger Mitchell. Dr. Mitchell, how are you, sir? I'm doing well, Mark. Thank you for having me. It is. It's a, it's a pleasure to have you, unfortunate, the circumstances, however. The, the, first of all, the National Medical Association actually made a, a statement calling for comprehensive reform in the aftermath of the Tyree Nichols death, didn't it? Yes, I mean we, you know, the National Medical Association. Many of your 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 listeners may not know that we're the oldest and largest group of African American physicians and represent African American physicians and their patients across the country. Um, and um, we have been in existence since 1895 uh, and have made it our mission. Um, to decrease disparities and increase equity across all lines. And, and so Tyree Nichols is, is one of, um, the latest of many, uh, deaths that we have, uh, that we've seen in custody. And so we, um, have been, um, since before, uh, even George Floyd, uh, talking about how we can improve, uh, the, 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 outcomes of our community that find themselves in the custody of the criminal legal system. And, and so just as the definition, Mark, quickly, when we talk about deaths in custody or in custody in general, we're talking about it across a continuum. So it starts in the pre-arrest phase where law enforcement may be running after someone um, or chasing after someone in a vehicle um, to uh, when they come into contact with an individual physically uh, to um, transport, booking, and holding uh, to being in short-term jail and then long-term incarceration. So any death that occurs during that continuum uh, would be considered a death in custody. And so we, um, in the latest death of Tyree Nichols, a 29-year-old Black man, um, having been severely beaten, um, we're, we, we've called for several things, uh, immediate development of a federal office responsible for the review of uh, fatal police encounters, um, the discontinuation of life-threatening maneuvers like the like hand and uh, knee and foot strikes, as well as rear naked neck restraints on the so-called chokehold to restrain someone's torso. Um, we also are, are, are asking for that... Um, the reporting by other law enforcement and witness of excessive force be made mandatory across the country. But the last two are, are, are extremely important. Um, full compliance with the Deaths in Custody Reporting Act um, and the addition of a checkbox on the U.S. standard death certificate that says deaths in custody so that we can have a public health measure and approach. And I'm glad you pointed that out because we do have to think about, you know, we see these prominent cases that usually are centered around contact with that initial that initial contact with the police. But this happens every day, even while people are in custody and jails and prisons, et cetera. Right. That's correct. It's happening every day. And, and what's most disturbing that everyone needs to understand is that we don't know how often it's happening every day. Um, you know, what we're relying on are journalist accounts. What we're relying on um, is that some jails or prisons, some law enforcement agencies are reporting to the Department of Justice. But the Deaths in Custody Reporting Act requires that all deaths in this country um, associated with law enforcement um, with that definition that I described, it's not a made up definition, it's a definition in law of what is in custody. 
that that these deaths be reported to the Department of Justice um, on a yearly basis. And right now, there is no enforcement of that law. And then um, right now, the Centers for Disease Control, who are responsible for reporting all of the deaths in this country, you know, from any cause and manner, any natural cause and manner, um, that Centers for Disease Control is currently not requiring that the death certificate articulate those that are dying in custody. So we do not know today, 2023, how many people are dying um, at the hands of law enforcement or in, in association with the criminal legal system. Now, that, that, the Death in Custody Reporting Act, that's, um, what, what year, I don't recall, did that act go into effect? So that's H.R. 1447, and it, and it went into effect in 2013. That's what I, okay. Um, so in, yep, in 2013. So there's three presidents that have not been able to get that Deaths and Custody Reporting Act up, um, complied with by our law enforcement organizations. And Mark, why are we asking? Yeah, I think it's important for our law enforcement organizations to report the deaths that occur in their organizations or secondary to their to their to their activities. But why is it that we're only asking the criminal legal system to report these deaths when every other death that is reported in this country and data being generated so that we can prevent deaths in cancer, deaths from cardiovascular disease, deaths from diabetes? pedestrians struck by motor vehicles, you know, you name it, maternal mortality, all of these things that we have, all of these initiatives surround, this death data, these pieces of death data comes from the CDC and information on the death certificate. Deaths in custody should be no different. Oh, so definitely, I would, would agree. In terms of your expertise, and obviously you've laid out some specific um, life-threatening maneuvers. In, in your experience, Dr. Mitchell, has, have you noticed a pattern of deaths in custody whereby the maneuvers are pretty common across the board, the maneuvers that cause these deaths? Yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, you know, a lot of the times um, when there are knees and weight of multiple officers placed on the backs of individuals where those individuals' backs, upper torso, lower neck, um, uh, you, and, and with the, the hands restrained and even in what they call a hog tie position, what we're, what I'm seeing in my practice is that these 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 maneuvers are leading to death the the um uh torso is unable to raise the you know individuals are unable to 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 get enough oxygen um to to be able to live and they go into a respiratory and then a cardiac arrest and so um i'm seeing that across uh, across the board um, in, in many of these altercations and it's Mark, it's, it's, it's often the altercation related deaths. Um, so it, you know, the shooting deaths are, are, are really not those that are in dispute. You know, if a law enforcement officer shoots a person, then those causes and manners of death become clear. It's when there's an altercation with law enforcement that oftentimes, um, um, there's some blurry blurring of lines on on what the cause and manner of death is. Nice buns, soft, fluffy, and ultra low net carbs. Discover Hero Bread, the delicious ultra low net carb bread with incredible taste and texture. Hero Bread has zero grams of sugar and is under 100 calories per serving. Plus, high in fiber with 5 to 10 grams of protein per serving. Available on Amazon.com, Walmart.com, and at Hero.co. That's H-E-R-O dot C-O. Delicious, ultra-low net-carb Hero Bread buns and tortillas. Soft and fluffy, high in fiber, 
and with zero grams of sugar, up to 10 grams of protein, coming in at under 100 calories. Order today at Hero.co and use the code AH10 to get 10% off your first purchase. That's AH10 at Hero.co, H-E-R-O dot C-O. Order from Hero.co now and get 10% off your first purchase with promo code AH10. That's 10% off with code AH10, H-E-R-O dot C-O. And the reason I ask that question, I'm, I'm wondering, and, and maybe this would be too much call for too much speculation on your part. I'm just wondering if within this culture, there's sort of a, an understanding amongst a lot of these law enforcement agencies with, with the very maneuvers you just described, that these are what people commonly prescribe to. I mean, a lot of times I think we look at these incidents uh, to some degree in isolation because they're so localized. But if you've got a number of people, and I guess that's why you need the reporting, and maybe that's why they don't want to do it, Doctor, as I'm, as I'm saying this out loud to you. If we started to get that reporting and we literally saw the same maneuvers, the same life-threatening maneuvers causing the same deaths regularly, even monthly. And again, folks, someone may very well have, have died in custody of any, at any level of law enforcement in the past 24 hours. We wouldn't even know it because the media hasn't and, and, and nobody, someone may not have a cell phone. People don't have cell phones to record stuff in, in jails and whatnot. But I, I bet if we got that reporting, I'm just afraid we would find that these this is this is pattern and practice across the board. No, no, Mark, and that's the whole point, right? When we're when we're trying to as a when we're trying to solve for a public health problem, right? We want the data so that we can identify the similarities, we can identify the differences, we can t- identify the age, race, gender circumstances surrounding deaths. And then we can correlate across hundreds and hundreds of data points what, where the risk may live. And then we, we develop programs um, and policy to mitigate that risk, to decrease that risk. And this is a known public health approach. We, 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 we're doing it with maternal mortality, where there's a checkbox on the death certificate. We're doing it with uh, motor vehicle collisions, um, bicyclists, we're doing it with the, that's why we know helmets work because once we in, put helmets on bicyclists, those decrease the amount of head trauma and death. Um, so when, when, when we're, when we're looking at solving a problem, uh, we want all the data, the most accurate, timely data as we can to be able to solve for the problem. So to your point, do we want to solve the problem? Do we want to stop deaths that are currently associated with our criminal legal system? Um, and, and that is the biggest, the biggest question. I think that America is ignoring the truth. I think we're, we're, it is a deliberate ignorance. Um, one might call it an official ignorance to the deaths that are occurring in the, in the custody in this country. And so, um, you know, we at the National Medical Association believe that, um, we can generate a, a coalition of individuals that are interested in looking at this data. And once the data is available, people have been asking, well, all right, the checkbox, they put the checkbox, what are you going to do with the data? Well, we build, we, we intend to build a whole system of reviewing that data and putting out reports surrounding the data that comes out of the Centers for Disease Control on deaths in custody and developing prevention constructs and prevention ideas to decrease these deaths. Um, and so to your point, you know, do we really want to do this? And if we want to do it, you know, yes, legislation would be the, the, one of the answers to put that checkbox on the U.S. standard death certificate. Um, but actually, the CDC can do it without, without law. They can, it's a policy decision. It is an administrative decision that they can make today. Um, and we could start gathering more accurate data. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's very important. Lastly, we, We've all had some type of visceral reaction to the video of Tyree Nichols. It, it's traumatic to all of us. In fact, you know, at some point, um, doctor, that's, that's a, a whole nother show about um, yeah. collective trauma. You know, you have Tyree's immediate family, but all of us as black people yeah. deal, and we don't, we don't deal with trauma in general. And a lot of our trauma that's internalized as collective, we just are forced to live with it. But let me ask you this. Uh, 
I'd love to hear your um, clinical reaction to what you saw in that video. Obviously, the things you probably saw and were looking for that the, the lay person did not see. But talk to us about what you saw and what that said to you, even in the context of what we're discussing today about these patterns and practices of life threatening maneuvers. Yeah, I mean, you know, what I saw was a defenseless man being kicked, punched, and beaten with a baton. And, you know, that type of beating um, on the human body, uh, you know, leads to all of what we what we call a blunt, blunt impact injury, which is, you know, contusions, bruises, um, fractures, or broken bones, um, and internal injury. Um, and obviously life threatening. And in the, in the case of Mr. Nichols, it was, uh, it was indeed the cause of his death was his, the, the beating of his, uh, of his body. And, and so, you know, one of the things that has spurred us on, particularly, uh, in this day and age is the fact that, um, there is now surveillance video. There is body worn camera. There is street level video or bystander video. And all of this is extremely important, um, to ensuring that there's a full depiction, an objective third person depiction of what occurred in that altercation and maybe even why the altercation occurred. And in the past, um, we have not had that. We have not had this technology, particularly from a medical examiner standpoint, to be able to review as we interpret the, um, the physical findings uh, at autopsy. And it becomes extremely important. And so the days of old where the medical examiner or the coroner has to rely solely on the uh, police report for their understanding of the circumstances and how the injuries were inflicted or how the injuries came upon um, now uh, we we don't have to rely on 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 that purely law enforcement account we can see the actions with our own two eyes which is which is a better scenario for the medical examiner and coroner as we try to continue and improve the independence of that office in all of these jurisdictions where are we on that is is is, is the nma pushing for there to be also greater in independence when it comes to metal examiners and coroner's office is is that something on its own track yeah that's something on its own track a lot of us that are medical examiners um in this country have been calling for uniformity of practice um i i have a um a book that that it's that's coming out it's called death in custody how american ignores the truth and what we can do about it. And it's set to hit on Johns Hopkins Press um, this upcoming summer. And in that book, we, we talk about me full medical examiner reform as part of the, uh, the approach to understanding uh, deaths in custody because there are a lot of medical examiners and coroners that are still not operating independently and are issuing causes and manner of death that quite frankly are wrong and lead to um, to lack of prosecution or lack of um, um, proceedings within the judicial system, within the court system, to allow for um, individuals, law enforcement, to be held accountable for their actions. And so um, that's on a separate track. But indeed, um, there's a need for continued medical examiner reform in this country uh, and coroner reform in this country. Absolutely. That's 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 a part of it. Uh, we know how important that is and we appreciate your work uh, and the work of the National Medical Association. Folks, this this is our our people's medical association always has been. And our dear brothers also at Howard University uh, School of Medicine, Howard University Hospital as well, one of our hospitals. And we need to take these matters on ourselves and we need people with his expertise doing just this uh, that's how this that's how this must stop and and frankly you know the, the cdc move is brilliant 
because as long as they're able to keep these incidents localized and we have to go to each and every jurisdiction versus it coming from a national entity like the CDC, as the good doctor said, we don't need a, a piece of legislation. They can just do this. Then that would shine a, a certain level of light and exposure on what's going on. And that's probably why there is resistance to it. That just the reporting itself would help us to fight against it. So again, we are thankful to the National Medical Association. Um, Dr. Mitchell, it's a pleasure to speak with you as always. And please keep us surprised of how this is, how this develops. And, you know, if we need to get some folk together and we need to put public pressure on the CDC, um, let us know. No, we do. And, and we'll let you know and your, your listeners, we're going to be developing um, some letters uh, that your listeners can send out to their legislators. Uh, we'll be um, putting forth some uh, legislation or helping to put forth some legislation on this. Um, and so we'll keep you all posted. Hopefully we can come back on and tell you about how we're moving things forward and get people um, involved um, because this is an action. Uh, the, the word says it, faith without works is dead. And so we need to work our faith. No question about it, folks. So once again, Dr. Mitchell is the um, Speaker of the House of Delegates for the National Medical Association and the Chair of Pathology at Howard University, uh, and also former Chief Medical Examiner for Washington, D.C. Dr. Mitchell, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks for getting woke and listening to Make It Plain. As always, perform an act of kindness on behalf of an elder or young person. Write a letter to a sister or brother who just so happens to find her or himself incarcerated. Offer libations to the ancestors upon whose sturdy shoulders we all now stand. And above all, give thanks to the God of your understanding by whatever name you call her and him. All God asks of us is that we give each other love. Thanks for giving MIP love. And please remember to subscribe and give us a five-star rating. If all hearts and minds are clear, it has been made plain.